Welcome. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to use the uh, art history brush in Photoshop um, to obtain uh, photo painting effects similar to what you might see in uh, Corel Painter 2016. I, I definitely use Corel Painter uh, 2016 on my Cintiq, but I tend to use it more for um, real painting rather than the cloning features. The art history brush in Photoshop is very useful but it can be difficult to use. But a lot of people don't know how to use it because you actually have to specify a history state that you'd like to paint. So what I've got here is an image, a photo I took of a, a local restaurant. And uh, right now it's not at a point where I would want to paint it because uh, it's a little bit too dark inside. And uh, the interior of the restaurant is actually what I'd like to focus on for my painting. So I'm gonna get us started here we're going to edit this photo so that it uh, it's a little bit brighter inside and it's it's ready for painting. Um, typically what we want to do is desaturate, uh, lower the contrast a little bit to prep for painting and also maybe uh, spice up the colors uh, to make them a little bit more interesting. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into um, the NYX software um, Color FX Pro 4. So just let that filter load. All right, so what we've got is a high key filter here. Uh, that it just so happened that that, that that was the first filter that came up when I opened it. And um, if you don't have that filter already uh, logged in here, you can find it on the side on uh, the uh, presets. So uh, if you don't have it, just click on high key to set it. And I'm gonna add a filter to this. Uh, let's see, I'm going to add maybe a photo stylizer um, just to uh, make the colors pop a little bit more and also get that, that sort of uh, lower contrast value that, that I was talking about. You can click the down button here to go through a couple styles. Actually, this might be a little, this style might be a little bit better for painting. And I'm going to go back to the high key here and just... Um, bring back some of the blacks and lower the contrast a little bit and maybe bump up the saturation to get some wilder colors, a little bit more warmth in the image and lower that dynamic high key a little bit. So that looks good. That's definitely brightened the interior. I can still see the sunbeams coming in. And what's going to happen here is as we photo paint this, um, it's it, it, instead of getting extremely dark tones in inside, which is the focus, we're going to get brighter tones. This area that's outside, we can always paint over later. I personally don't want those cars there. I'd rather have this window opening onto some sort of uh, field or something like that. But this is just de for demonstration purposes. I'm, I'm actually not going to do that. So I'm going to hit OK to apply that filter. And uh, you can see the NYX software um, adds a new layer with those filters applied. Okay. Now, you might say this is a, it might be a little bit too bright for you. I don't know. We can always come back and, and modify the styling uh, uh, after the fact in, in post-production. After we do some photo painting, maybe the, we realize the colors are a little bit too bright, a little bit too saturated, we can come, down and come back and uh, tone those down a little bit. So now, if I click on the Art History Brush, which is over here on the, on the left, and if you don't have the Art History Brush selected, you probably have the just regular History Brush selected. The Art History Brush is what's going to allow you to paint in your history. And it's going to artistically follow lines. So instance, for instance, if I paint down here, it's gonna follow the lines of these, these bricks, which is sort of what you want because if you were painting this from an image, you would actually be painting these bricks this way instead of you know painting across, which wouldn't make much sense. Now the problem is the way that I've got it set up, the art history brush is going from the last layer in my history so if I start painting, you can see it's going to paint those dark colors in there. And you can see that, that it's following the lines here of the brick. When you get into the interior of the brick, it, it might sort of go in different directions, which is fine because what you're dealing with is a consistent field of color there. And, and those, those lines will just go any way they want. 
it's fine. So I'm going to hit undo. Uh, the problem with the art history brush is that by default, it's going to go essentially back to the beginning of the image, the background, which is uh, this image that we had here, not this image. So what I've got to do is go into my history here and you can see when I, I'm in the essentials workspace, when I click on the history button, it gives me a list of all of the changes that I've applied to this image. This is duplicate layer. Uh, just I had been working on this in a separate project and I just duplicated the original image into this. But you should have something similar to this or if you weren't using color effects, you just used built-in filters to um, you know change the, the saturation and the, the uh, contrast of the image, then you would see that here. But I'm gonna take a snapshot, which is this button, create new snapshot of the current state of the image because that's what I'd like to paint. Now you'll notice that there's this icon that looks similar to the uh, the art history brush, it's actually the icon for the history brush, but that is what it's using as the source for the art history brush. So what we're going to do instead is click on this, this new snapshot. And it, by double clicking on it, you can also name it whatever you want, um, you know, high saturation. Um, and now I can start painting in here. Now I've chosen one of the default brushes here. You, this is, you can pick whatever brush that you'd like to work with for painting. Um, I, I do like to pick something that has a little bit of grain to it, uh, otherwise the colors can come out a little bit flat, and I'll show you uh, how to blend the colors uh, with the mixer brush in, in just a minute. So I'm gonna just select a brush, maybe increase the size. What I like to do is get, uh, I'm using the bracket keys to uh, increase the size of the brush. What I like to do is just get uh, the base layer of, of paint down. I'm, I'm just going to be using my mouse right now. And you can see if I just start painting with this, um, because the brush is so large, it's not really following any particular pattern. Um, you're you're going to see that later when we lower the uh, size of the brush, it's going to follow those lines um, as it did initially when I, when I demoed this on the darker image. So let's just paint in here. And this just sort of gives you a color base. You can see the roughness here uh, where the brush strokes stop. I, I like that effect. If you just use a, a round soft brush or a round hard edge brush, you're not gonna get that effect. So now what I'm gonna do is lower the size of the brush. You, you want to lay down that base color and then you want to go back and apply smaller brush strokes for, for detail. So maybe here what I'll do, and you can see that the brush is now starting to follow like the curve of the chair there, um, starting to follow the curve of the chairs here, the tabletop, um, the direction of the bricks, um, and I'm gonna just paint over here just to give you an idea. And if I lower that brush size even more, um, it's going to really follow, you can start seeing the, the groove in between the tiles on the floor that's starting to come out and I'll paint around the chair here. I am, as I'm painting, sort of going in the direction, the general direction of the image that I that I know is there, but you don't necessarily have to do that. And in fact, if you paint down that base color and you, you haven't memorized the image, you won't really know what direction things are actually going in. Um, we'll just get the window up here. Uh, some of these geometric shapes will actually start to look almost photorealistic once you once you paint um, Because they're just basically solid colors in geometric shapes um, And you can see this is kind of cool. There's this woman uh, dancing in the painting here, and it's actually following uh, the spiral of the dress um, Paint up on the ceiling here less important areas obviously you don't have to give much that much attention to I want, I'm not going to give that much attention to the outside here Maybe just the edges later on, I'll wind up um, fixing that, turning that into a field or something like that. And I'm gonna go even smaller here. Uh, there were some people sitting here. Get the objects on the table. And I'm just running my mouse back and forth. Uh, you can use, uh, you know, a tablet, obviously, if you have that for pressure sensitivity purposes. If you're using that, I recommend turning on this little feature up here. Use pressure for opacity. That way, as you press harder, 
it becomes uh, more solid. Otherwise, it's it's transparent, and you'll just see the uh, colors that are underneath the base colors. Um, but you can see that we're getting a, a very uh, painterly feel in here, and I do want some of this color bleed. I don't want to make these edges perfect. If we want to make this look like a painting, I just want to sort of get in the gist, the idea of the sculptures on the ceiling, um, the idea that this is a plant here, some sort of fern, and I'm running my mouse along the edge of that plant, and the lines are automatically going out along the leaves of the fern, just like that. Now, I'm just going to show you briefly what would happen if I used uh, I turned on the opacity and I used the Wacom pen here and just as as a piece of advice if you don't uh, if you don't have an art pen uh, that's fine the art pen has a barrel rotation but because the art history brush is following the lines of the painting barrel rotation really doesn't matter that much um, so I'm just drawing subtly here and you can see the impact is not quite as significant but if you want to do some some fine edge work um, you can do that. I do have that uh, opacity turned on. So you can see that if I draw lightly, some of the color from the bottom comes through. Um, I'm going to draw over here. The other thing that this helps with is uh, blending. If you'll notice when the art history brush is running, it just sort of lays down a flat color and there's no, there's no mixing of the color. There doesn't appear to be any mixing. Um, now we're starting to get the child's face in over here. Um, and this is all because I'm, I'm pressing lightly on my, on my art pen. And that pressure is also determining the size as well as the opacity. So it's, it's getting slightly more detailed when I do that. Okay. So once I'm done laying down the, the basic artwork, uh, what I might want to do is come back in and blend some of these colors. And the way you can do that is by using this mixer brush here. The mixer brush uh, will allow you to mix br uh, the colors on canvas. Uh, again, you can pick the type of brush you'd like, and then you can pick the style of brush that you'd like. I tend to go for the very wet, heavy mix because I want colors to mix. If you pick dry, heavy load, it's going to pick up your main color, and it's not really not going to blend colors that well. So I'm gonna, I like to pick the very wet, heavy mix. And what I can do then is start blending colors. And again, I'm using my mouse. And really in this situation, because it's not following lines, I shouldn't be using my mouse. I should be using the Wacom tablet. So I just switched. And using that um, rough brush that I used before for the art history brush, I can just go in and start blending colors together. You can see there's a lot of gradation. Some of this I like, like here, this is not too bad. Uh, it's not too bad there with the sunlight coming in. I kind of like how that looks. But over here it's a little messy. It just looks like a bunch of worms on the table. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and smooth some of that out um, so you get the idea of, of how to handle this. I don't know what's on the table here. I can sort of make this whatever I want. There's some of the gray from the floor coming into the table. I'm going to mix uh, the brown back into the table and get rid of those grays on the edge. Okay. And you just continue like this mixing. Try out some of the different brush styles that you have here. You can also do a custom setting. Uh, the wet is essentially how much it picks up. Uh, the load is, is how much paint is on the brush initially and, and mixes how well it mixes. Flow obviously is is how much flow is coming off of the brush. If that's very low, you don't really get, you get a lot of transparency. One thing I want to note before we quit here is going back to the art history brush. Um, there are some options here in this style. So you'll notice that when I was painting, those lines were pretty long when I got, when the brush got smaller and they were following the contours of the original photo. But you can choose a different painting style. You can paint in tight curls, loose curls. Uh, generally, the, the loose is, is better when you're just getting down the color because it's going to sort of give it that random, the randomness that comes with sort of abstract painting. Um, tight short is, is more of just 
individual dabs. I'll show you what that looks like uh, right now. So let's just paint over with the art history brush. You can see that uh, painting this, I get a sort of pointillist style. This might be good for doing detail. I'm just gonna run my mouse down the, um, the edge of those bricks there. And now let me switch to uh, loose curl. Uh, you can see you're getting round, round uh, pieces coming out, following uh, to some extent the the edges. Um, the dab is is just very very tiny. Um, I don't even know how to describe it, but if you just want to uh, get in there, this tends to reveal a little bit too much detail for me. Usually, when I'm at the point for doing detail, I I sort of do it myself using the mixer brush and painting by hand, but you can go in there and get a dab. Uh, I personally like the loose long method, uh, follows the contours, gives you a nice artistic look. You can come in and edit that later. And then once you're done here, you can uh, proceed to um, edit this if you don't like the colors too saturated. I sort of do like the way that this is coming out here, although probably go back and lower the uh, lightness of the sky and the outside and also uh, add an additional layer here uh, for a field instead of revealing those cars. So thanks for watching. Um, if you're interested in more uh, Photoshop videos, um, Photoshop actions, uh, visit my web website at matthewkramerart.com. Thanks.